Well, after the priest prays the intrite of the Mass, and you'll notice, uh, as I said, it's, it represents the Incarnation, the priest then moves to the center of the altar. And even that movement, going from the book to the center of the altar, has a meaning behind it. It represents the Holy Family leaving Nazareth and going to Bethlehem. They are leaving their home and traveling to Bethlehem. Even the movement of the priest has a mystical meaning behind it. It's so beautiful that the whole Mass represents the life of Christ, as you're going to see, from his incarnation all the way to his ascension and this uh, descent of the Holy Ghost. Every aspect of the life of our Lord is represented in the Mass. So this part of the Mass now is where the Holy Family goes to Bethlehem. And the priest says, the Kyrie. Well, we already talked about Latin in the Mass, and this prayer is the only Greek we have in the Mass. The, the church keeps it because it wants to show the connection between the Eastern and the Western church, the Greek church and the Latin church. There's a connection between them. They are united. We are one church, one holy Roman Catholic church. And even though we all, we pray in the Latin language, the church wants to remind us there are many of our brethren in the Eastern world who have the same faith as we do, who use Greek instead. Greek is permitted. You can celebrate the Mass in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. And those are the three languages, as I've told you in an earlier conference, those are the three languages we have in the Mass. So here we have the Greek. And obviously, I think all of you realize this, the three Kyrie's at first are directed to God the Father. Then the three Christes are directed to God the Son. And then the final three Kyrie's to God the Holy Ghost. It's a prayer to the Holy Trinity begging for mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. We're begging the Most Holy Trinity to have mercy. This prayer has been in the Mass since the time of St. Sylvester, probably even before that. Uh, we know that Pope St. Sylvester, who lived in the 320s, the 330s, we know that he ordered it to be in every Mass um, after the example of the Greeks so that we would not forget them, that we would pray with them and for them. Now, the prayer of the Kyrie represents in the Mass the prayer of the sinful world at the time that Christ came into it. The world was very sinful. Uh, we had, at that time, 2,000 years ago, people had fallen away from the practice of the true faith. Even those who had the true religion, the Jews, uh, there weren't very many of them practicing it. You know that the Pharisees, they had risen up and they were overemphasizing certain things that were not that important. And then you had the others who were denying certain doctrines, like the Sadducees and, and others who were denying certain doctrine. And then, of course, you had most of the known world at that time, which was worshiping gods, the false gods of Rome and Greece. It was all over the known world. They had all this, uh, this uh, multiple, uh, multiple gods that they worshiped. And so... You, you can think of that when you say the Kyrie, and you can think of the fact that our world today is just as bad as it was 2,000 years ago. It's one of the reasons that many people say that the, the second coming is not that far off, because the world is getting very, very pagan, like it was when Christ first came. We've almost come full circle. When Jesus came, the world was totally pagan, and when he comes again, the world will be pagan again. And we're, we're getting to that point. The, the traditional Christians, the traditional Catholics and Christians, are very, very few in number and are being overrun by, by a world that, 
that simply has embraced, again, paganism. So, we think of that during the Curie. Think of the state of the world and pray the Curie fervently. And when it's sung at a high mass, you should sing with the choir. Obviously, you cannot sing the introit. You don't know the introit. You don't have the music in front of you. But all of you should know how to sing the Kyrie. The, the chants of the Kyrie should be so familiar. I remember Father Bermeau telling us he went down to South America. Um, he was stationed down there. And he saw this boy throwing a ball against the wall, just like kids in America would do, taking a rubber ball and he's throwing it against the wall and he's bouncing it against the wall. And Father Bromo was walking past him and he hear, heard the boy singing as he was throwing the ball against the wall. And what was the boy singing? He was singing the Kyrie. Now that shows you uh, there, a, a complete difference of you know, what, what it's like to grow up in a country that at least is, is nominally Catholic. The hymns of the church should be as familiar to you as the, as the songs that are, are considered pop songs, popular songs. As a matter of fact, the chants of the church should be more familiar. And it's amazing that so few people will sing at Mass. We stand for the Kyrie. That's why you stand when the priest is incensed in the altar, because you're supposed to sing with the choir. You're supposed to join in and sing. You have the hymnals in your pews, but I don't think very many of you are singing <laughs> because I never, I can hear the choir singing, but you can tell, you can always tell when a congregation is singing because the, it's just a, a much fuller sound. It's so much fuller and it's so much more beautiful when everyone is singing. Now you might say, but I have a lousy voice, Father. I can't sing very well. And you, that's fine, but there's nothing wrong with you just doing Kyrie. You can still sing that loud. Nobody's going to notice that. Now, obviously, the choir sometimes sings a Kyrie that you don't know very well, and, and so you're not able to join in. Or when they sing a polyphonic Kyrie, you're not able to join in. But most of the time, you can join in because most of the time they're just singing the Mass of the Angels, or the Mass of Our Lady, uh, which is Mass of the Angels is Mass number 8, Mass of Our Lady is Mass number 9, and the Mass for the Sundays during the year is Mass number 11. Those are the most common Masses that are sung. And then at Easter time, Mass number 1 is also very common, which is the, the Mass for Paschal Tide. I think all of you can learn Mass 1, 8, 9, and 11 very quickly and easily, and also the Requiem Mass the Kyrie from the Requiem Mass. They're very, very easy chants, and we, we pick them up very easy, and we should sing with the choir. Hopefully, um, I'll be able to start maybe putting in the bulletin, like we did in some of our other parishes, we would put into the bulletin uh, what Kyrie was being said, sung that day. But you have on the wall here in church, you have a plaque uh, up on the wall that the choir is supposed to be inserting into that plaque the page number so you can join in with the singing of the Kyrie. And I'm pretty sure they do that every high mass. They go up there and um, one, of the, one of the choir members, or Mr. Zimmerman I know does it, they put up the number, the page number or the hymn number that is being sung. So you should join in and you should try to, you should try to sing the Kyrie so you learn at least uh, those masses, as I mentioned.